Welcome to the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. I'm Tim Young, and I'm here with American Greatness and our sponsors. By the way, there's my name. Look at that. If you're if you are watching this, I finally figured out my banners on the bottom here. There you go. Look at that. There's Tim Young. You can follow me at Tim Runs His Mouth. See, I've, I've got all these things now. And uh, you can go check out one of our sponsors, our friends, actually, really, CigarsDirect.com. Uh, also, I've got this really cool hat uh, that I got. I paid for this. This is a uh, Fuente Opus X hat that I got the other day uh, from probably the best cigar lounge bar I've ever been to in America. And it is called uh, Grand Cathedral Cigar- Cigars. It's in Tampa. And it's an old church that they basically just redid the inside of. And it's the, really like it's a wild place. And uh, I mean, I had a great time there, great drinks and uh, great people, all uh, very conservative people. Of course, the Tampa area, area is uh, very conservative to begin with, but it helps when you have a really cool place to hang out with all of these people. So Grand Cigars, uh, Grand Cathedral Cigars, sorry, if you're in the Tampa area, definitely go check that out. Uh, also, of course, Cigars Direct, you can go check out our sponsor, CigarsDirect.com. Uh, if you want to go uh, get some decent sticks or uh, whatever you're looking for, uh, they have all of the, I think they have a collection thing going on now, not a collection thing where they're collecting, but uh, if you are a collector, they are doing these, this crazy giveaway of all of the swag that they've uh, accumulated, accumulated over the past year. And it's, I uh, got to hang out the other day in their, uh, their conference room and in the conference room, they had literally every cool knickknack or, a humidor or whatever you could possibly want from every major brand. And uh, so that is something you should go check out cigarsdirect.com and of course, uh, Grand Cathedral Cigars. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely didn't have Nikki Haley claiming the election was rigged and stolen from her. I thought, according to her and others, that we weren't supposed to be saying that elections were rigged, uh, that we weren't supposed to be saying that they were stolen. But uh, apparently that's a new thing now. She now can say that uh, elections are stolen and rigged. How about that? We always knew Nevada was a scam. Trump had it rigged from the very beginning. There are multiple press stories on. Yep. So she she is now claiming that she lost in Nevada to, by the way, uh, none of these candidates. So she's second to none. She lost in Nevada to none of these candidates. That's literally who she lost to said none of these candidates was what people voted. Uh, and she claims that it was rigged. Oh, by the way, this is my uh, my king mug, but it's only on one side. I get to see that I'm a king. Uh, you don't. You might already know. Uh, so that is that is Nikki Haley. She needs to just go away. She really needs to go away. Uh, that being said, someone who needs to go away as well are the ladies on The View. And this is probably the greatest clip that I've ever seen from The View, uh, Sunny Hostin decided to do her uh, her lineage, her family, her 23andMe or whatever it is, where they, they search your family's history. And uh, it didn't turn out the way that she thought it would. You're going to love this little piece of, uh, of, I think, television history, really. I'm going to blow her up full screen here. You're, you're going to want to see this. You know, I was really reluctant. I don't know how you felt when you did it, Whoopi, but I was really reluctant to do it because... I just sensed that there could be something in my family history that would be um, disappointing. Um, Negative. Negative, yes. I thought I was going to have that kind of moment. And Skip had asked me to do it for a long time. And I finally decided to do it because I thought it'd be helpful for my children. So, uh, yap, yap, yap. You know that Sonny uh, Hostin is probably one of the biggest racists or race hustlers on television. So what's about to come out here? And, And stay with me here is pretty pretty freaking remarkable. My children's children to know what their yeah, real, real history yeah. was, you know? But what I found out was that my mother's family, while um, they are Puerto Rican, they actually originate from Spain. And the reason that they moved to Puerto Rico is because the slave trade mm-hmm. had been sort of canceled in Spain and then Curacao, and then they moved all of their slaves to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And so the biz, the family business, I have been told that they were printers and journalists, <laughs> but they were in fact enslavers. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mother- <laughs> so A hush fell over the audience. It was deeply disappointing. <laughs> so that is from uh, MRC, they watch all that garbage. But uh, I-, I can't get enough. I literally can't get enough of this story. Uh, Sonny Hostin's family, uh, they are Puerto Rican because they fled countries that were outlawing slavery. 
So uh, slavery was no longer cool in Spain. It was no longer cool in Curacao. And they ended up in Puerto Rico where they could continue hustling slaves. Her family wasn't just like slave owners and slave traders. They were like the, they were, that was the family business. And they had to relocate. They actually had to relocate multiple countries to end up in Puerto Rico so they could keep selling slaves. Now, I believe Sonny Hostin is one of the clowns who many times advocates for reparations. And my question is, when is she going to start paying reparations? Because she directly, her family, her family's wealth, her family's legacy, is directly impacted because they were selling and buying slaves to the point that they moved countries so that they could continue the family business. Of all people on national television that should be paying reparations, it is Sunny Hostin. By the way, she has to be blocked on Twitter, which I think is amazing. I want to watch this clip again because it's so ridiculous. Again, she's saying to you here, and this is a major race hustler who is all about reparations. She's saying here that her family literally bought and sold slaves and left countries so they continue, they could continue to sell and buy slaves because it is their family business. They couldn't pick up, you know, farming or uh, you know, making booze or making cigars or what, what else would you go uh, uh, making clothes, textiles, all the other options back in the day, cobbling. I don't even know what, what, what all of these other options. Nope. Sonny Hostin's family. Sonny Hostin's family sold slaves to the point that they moved multiple countries. They did not give up the business. They put all their slaves on a boat and moved them to Puerto Rico from Spain and Curacao. So they can continue selling slaves. I believe she owes a lot of people reparations. Here we go. I just want to watch this clip again. It's amazing. History was, you know, but what I found out was that my mother's family, while um, they are Puerto Rican, they actually originate from Spain. And the reason that they moved to Puerto Rico is because the slave trade mm -hmm. had been sort of canceled in Spain and then Curacao, and then they moved all of their slaves to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And so the biz, the family business, I have been told that they were printers and journalists. I highly doubt that she was told that her family were printers and journalists, by the way. I, I highly doubt that. I don't believe for one second that they were like, oh yeah, your family's a journalist like you. No, 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 no. I think that's a BS story that she was probably telling people for a long time. She probably had this like, you know, black empowerment story where she uh, got up and said, you know, my family, I come from journalists. I come from people who have written uh, and, and publish things and yada, yada, yada. Uh, there is no way that you would be that far off. I have a feeling she knew about it the entire time. I don't even know why she would have gone on television and talked about this, to be honest with you. I think it's a big mistake for her to do that because now she looks like one of the biggest hypocrites in the business. I mean, I, I don't think leftists care about this stuff. I don't think that they care about looking like complete hypocrites. But in this instance, she is the worst of the worst. And if she is calling, which she has done, for reparations, she's the one who should be very out front. How many, how many millions of dollars does she make a year to, to be a propagandist for the Democratic Party on The View? She should be the one that's out there paying these reparations back on her own. But she should be the first one. All of, her, all of her life's wealth, it's all because of her family who sold slaves. Love this. My I was told my family were journalists, but turns out they sold slaves. A little different. I have been told that they were printers and journalists, but they were in fact enslavers. Uh -huh. um, oh, love the audience, by the way. Oh, and then I they love, laughed off. It's so a hush fell over the audience. It was and yeah, and the person who's laughing about it the most, Joy Behar, in the middle, uh, is of course known for wearing blackface. So, I mean, why would she care? And what is what is Whoopi turning into over there? What is happening with Whoopi's hair? You see, Whoopi. All the way on the right-hand side. I don't know how to zoom in any more than what I have. But Whoopi looks like a predator. And not like a child predator, but like a, pre like a predator, like a... Hold on. Predator, like a, a sci-fi predator. Like she literally... I mean, take a look at that hair. I think I might have actually put a tweet on this a couple of years ago, or a couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago. But she literally looks like a predator. We don't need to see any more of this clip, so I'll just pull this up. But, I mean, that, Whoopi's hair is like just, 
She's kind of looking like that. Who wore it better? Whoopi or the Predator? Good Lord. I'll go back to this. I, I kind of want to go back and take a look at this again. I, just, I can't get over it. You know, I was really reluctant. To, uh, to the old uh, MRC for, for pulling this up, but I just want to get to look at Whoopi. What is she doing? Woof. A little bit of hair on top to take, take all of it off. Good God almighty. So yeah, so uh, that's Sunny Hostin. She is uh, wealthy because of uh, the slave trade. That's what her family did. Good work. Great work. You know what my family didn't do? Sell slaves. You know what they didn't do? Uh, also, they didn't move countries to continue selling slaves. So uh, when I hear anything about reparations, they don't me. They don't me. Uh, Joe Biden, for some reason... Okay, so I want to talk about this first. Joe Biden had a press conference tonight. I'm not sure why he had a press conference tonight. <laughs> but that, a special counsel um, said that they would not go after Joe Biden for the mishandled documents, the documents he removed from his office illegally from the Senate and the vice presidency. Uh because he has a faulty memory. So the actual quote is, let me see. Well, let's we can get into this. So I, I, I want to talk about this. So the quote is something like he's a nice man and, and we couldn't bring charges against him because he's uh, he had trouble. I'll, I'll get down to it here. It's, it's got to be in here. But special counsel Robert Hur wrote in his assessment of Biden's mental acuity and power of recall described as sparse, apparently hazy, and in one interaction, so bad that the president could not recall even within several years of when his oldest son had died. And then he said he shouldn't bring charges because, uh, where is the, here we go. At trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury as he did during our interview of him as a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with poor memory. So again, Donald Trump has, uh, I, this is insane, by the way. There, you want to talk about a, a two-tier system of justice. Donald Trump has 40 counts against him of removing, and, and he has the right to remove those documents because he was president when he did it. You can declassify anything. But uh, Donald Trump had uh, 40 counts against him, and I believe up to 450 years that he could be sentenced for uh, removing these documents. But Joe Biden, who absolutely broke the law, absolutely broke the law, because he wasn't president when he, and the president's the only person who has the power to declassify things, is uh, getting blown over his his trial. They're not going to take it to trial. They're not going to charge him with anything because he comes off as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with poor memory. If you don't think there's a two-tiered system of justice in this country, I don't know what to tell you. So Joe Biden had a press conference tonight. I'm not sure why he had a press conference tonight. And he came out and rambled. I mean, rambled a bunch. Uh, one of which, here we go, he yells at a reporter that this reporter, this is a very interesting clip. A reporter calls him, call, uh, asks him about what he thinks about the American people uh, who have now expressed concern about his memory and his health. Here you go. For months when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many American people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your judgment. Public that is not the judgment concerns, of the press. They express concerns about your mental acuity. That is your judgment. That's not the judgment of the press. It's literally polls have said that people are don't think that he is healthy many american people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age that is they, your judgment they, that is they your judgment the public that is not the judgment concerns. of the press they express it doesn't make any sense that is your judgment that is not the judgment of the press that, that doesn't even make any sense he doesn't even know what he's rambling about the american people there are many polls that say that that they don't think that joe biden is mentally uh capable to continue being president concerns about your mental acuity they say that you are too old mr president in december you told me that you believe there are many other democrats who could defeat donald trump so why does it have to be you now what what is your answer because i'm to that the most question? qualified person in this country to be president of the united states and finish the job i started it doesn't even make any sense just rambling just rambling because i'm the most qualified person i'll get it done so, by the way, in that decision to not prosecute Joe Biden, 
they did find that he did actually take classified documents. Like they just didn't want to charge him because he'd come off as a well-meaning, uh, elderly, forgetful man. Uh, so here he is talking about uh, not sharing classified documents. This this is just, I think he's again one of the symptoms of dementia is anger and fits of rage like this. I think he's losing. I, I really do. I mean, like beyond what he has been. Not share classified information. I did not share it with your ghostwriter. With my ghostwriter, I did not. Guarantee you, did not. But the what special the, counsel said. Well, no, he did, did not say that. Okay. Okay. But the, the special counsel did say that. Say that. But Mr. President, what other, let me okay, answer your question. The fact of the matter is, what I didn't want repeated. I didn't want him to know, and I didn't read it to him. Was I had written a long memorandum to President Obama, why we should not be in this in Afghanistan, and I was of this multiple pages. And so what I was referring to, I said classified. I should have said it was should be private because it was a contact between the president and the vice president as to what was going on. That's what he's referring to. It was not classified information in that document. So in one certain document, it wasn't classified information. They absolutely found a box of classified documents in his garage. That's that goes without saying. That is ab they absolutely found that box of documents. It was sitting in his garage, rotting away. Who knows who had access to it? Who know? I mean, it, it was in, unsecured. And he's claiming just, I, he has no idea where he is. And, and further proof of that, by the way, is Biden talking about the president of Egypt saying that he's the president of Mexico. This is, and this is, again, he starts talking about Hamas here. You tell me if you think this guy is a healthy man. The conduct of the response In Gaza, in the Gaza Strip, uh, has been um, uh, over the top. Over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. So he's referring to the president of Egypt, not the president of Mexico. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. And so the conduct. Again, I, I want you to watch this and we're going to go back to it in a second. But the person that he's referring to is President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. He's the president of Egypt. And he says he's the president of Mexico. I, I, but I, again, I want you to see this because I, I've been watching this video. This does not look like a healthy man. We're going to play this again. Just look at how he just stares off and he can't get his thoughts together at all. The conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip, has been um, over the top. I think that. Uh, I mean, he can't pull it together. This is like he is struggling to either read or something here, but he cannot pull it together. As you know. Initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I how talked to him. How do you even screw up and say that the president of Egypt is the president of Mexico? I convinced him to open the gate. I mean, he's even talking about Hamas and, and Israel in this instance here, and he's struggling through it, but he's bringing up Mexico. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I mean, again, just lost, just absolutely terribly lost. The guy is not mentally fit to be president of the United States, but uh, I'm not sure if they're going to replace him on the campaign. That's the big debate now. Are they going to replace Joe Biden on the campaign with Big Mike, uh, Michelle Obama? I don't think they are. I think they're going to keep him around. I think right now they're going to keep this guy in power for as long as possible. And why not? Nobody's challenging him. Nobody's stopping him when he commits crimes. Uh, Joe Biden gets, but he's a, he's a well-meaning old man with bad memory. He's not actually committing crimes, right? That's what they're claiming. It's a problem. It's a two-tiered system of justice. Again, Donald Trump has 40 charges, uh, I believe up to 450 years in jail for, uh, for removing documents. He had a right to remove as president because he can, because he can, while president, declassify documents. And he had them safely, and, and se they were secured in Mar-a-Lago. They had that big raid, that big uh, ridiculous raid of Mar-a-Lago. 
you get those documents and they leaked photos of it. They were going through, weren't they going through uh, Melania's closet? So they did all that, but nothing for Biden. And then Biden, of course, it gets the, uh, the pass with the, uh, you know, he's just a well-meaning old man. Just a well-meaning old man who has bad memory. Hmm. Interesting. By the way, if you think you've got it rough and you think America's not uh, crappy enough, you have to see this. Now in Atlanta, and this is a Fox News story that came out the other day. Now in Atlanta, there are over 1,200 illegal squatters just stealing homes right now. Squatters are running neighborhoods in Atlanta. A trade association says illegal tenants have taken over 1,200 homes, even turning some of them into strip clubs. Todd Pyro has the details. They're just running illegal strip clubs. They're just running strip clubs in homes that they stole. That's Atlanta right now. 1,200 homes. Yeah, Absolute insanity, Ainsley. These squatters have been terrorizing and ruining entire neighborhoods. But the problems don't just stop with the squatting. Police say, take a look. This Atlanta home was being used. It's a nice house as an illegal strip club, beautiful home there. Squatters hosting noisy parties, organizing illegal street races. And according to one trade group, it is just one of 1,200 homes that have been taken over in the Atlanta area so far. Authorities say evicting squatters in Atlanta is a pretty big challenge, something Army Lieutenant Colonel Dahlia Duare found out when returning from active duty. She discovered a man who has a lengthy criminal history squatting in her $500,000 home. And back in May, she told Fox News that the police response was so slow, she had to figure out another way to get that squatter out on her own. It's called uh, guns. We'll get rid of squatters very quickly. You can get people out of by arming yourself and defending your home. You will get rid of squatters quickly. But imagine that coming home, your house is broken into probably everything. You know, once you get rid of this trash out of your house, one of these squatters, they've already stolen everything. They've gone through all your food. They've drank all your booze. They've probably taken all your clothes, anything that they could possibly get. They probably destroyed the place because they're trash. So they've wrecked the entire place on the inside, probably graffitied it. Who knows? Who knows what they did? Run up your phone bill. Do they still do that? Phone bills? But that's Atlanta now. 1,200 squatters, uh, sorry, 1,200 houses are being squatted in, stolen, and they're running illegal strip clubs out of them. What's the police doing there? Nothing. It's another Soros DA down there that's doing nothing. Another great town is being destroyed. So that's going to be it for me. Here we go. Look at this. The Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. There we are. I'm Tim Young. Uh, glad to be here with American Greatness. And look at that. You can go to cigarsdirect.com, our sponsor. Go check out CigarsDirect.com. They have their 25th uh, anniversary cigar right now. I can't believe they've been around for 25 years. And I believe I'm going to be working with them on creating my own uh, booze band brand pretty soon. And as well as uh, going to CigarsDirect.com, make sure you go to Grand Cathedral Cigars, where I got that cool Fuente Opus X hat uh, in Tampa. If you're in the area, you won't regret it. This has been the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast for American Greatness. Look, I'm going to flip between my name and that. I'm Tim Young. And I'll see you next time right here, American Greatness. Tim runs his mouth. See ya.